Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to get into the book of Haggai the prophet. Okay, um, which ultimately what we're going to do is tie it, okay, as it does prophetically um, to what we're doing now as we are rebuilding the tabernacle of David, okay, as we're going to read here in this summary off of BibleHub.com, it says the book of Haggai is narrative history and prophetic oracle, okay, so it's history and there's a lot of prophecy in there as well leading to what we're doing here today building a spiritual temple okay what you're going to see is that Haggai was used along with Zechariah all right as a figureheads catalyst to ultimately call our people starting with the leadership to repentance and to get off of their asses okay Haggai and Zechariah rebuked all right the leadership starting with of course uh Zerubbabel, who was the governor at that time. We didn't have a king, so we had governors. All right. And we'll show you Zerubbabel was in the lineage of Yahweh Shai. All right. And also the high priest Joshua. Okay. Haggai and Zechariah were used, all right, as uh, very important parts of our people being galvanized to get off of their ass and finish the rebuilding of the temple. OK, so it says the prophet Haggai wrote it approximately 520 B.C. Haggai is among the most careful and precisely dated books in the entire Bible. It says it is a post exilic book, meaning it was written after the captivity in Babylon, because remember, who did Babylon fall to? All right. The uh, Medes and the Persians. So this is a post exilic exilic book meaning it was written after we were in captivity in babylon it says key personalities are haggai zerubbabel and joshua it says the purpose of this book was that haggai was called by god to encourage the people to finish the construction of the temple in jerusalem all right because at the time of cyrus we started to build all right but due to opposition okay and threats from the heathen all right. Our people stopped building. OK. And then at the time of Darius. OK. Um, which is where Haggai comes onto the scene along with Zechariah. OK. We were called to get off of our asses and finish. OK. So the prophets have always been influential in our people getting off of their ass. <laughs> Even people in leadership positions. This is nothing new. And we see the same thing happening today. It says. The construction has ceased because of the opposition and because of the neighboring countries and the Jews were frightened. All right. Remember, this was Judah, Benjamin and Levi leaving the Babylonian captivity. OK, the other tribes were already uh, in the Americas as they left the Assyrian captivity. That can be explained in uh, second Edges the 13th chapter. So it says in chapter one, God called Haggai to deliver his message. The Jews were living in their comfortable houses while the temple, <laughs> the house of the Most High, sat unfinished. OK, and um, what you'll what you'll find out is that 24 days after Haggai's rebuke, OK, is when our people, the Jews, beginning with the leadership, got off of their ass and start back working. OK, it says in, in chapter two, Haggai motivated the Jews by continuing the building of the temple and that God will bless them. All right, and then he also goes into future prophecy of the spiritual temple being finished. All right, as uh, Zechariah also went into. So we'll go into the book of Haggai, which the name Haggai, uh, real quick, it means festive, from what I remember, or festivities. Haggai, yep, festive. All right, when you go into the um, root word, all right, Haga. All right. Festive feast, festival gathering. OK. And um, during this time, our people gathered. 
okay, to for the rebuilding of the temple, okay? So going back here, uh, starting at verse 1 in the book of Haggai, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, okay, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shil Shialtel, governor of Judah, okay, because we didn't have kings at this time, all right, it was governor, okay, and Joshua, the son of Yahweh Tazadak, the high priest, all right, so you have the high priest <laughs> and you have the king, basically, or the high priest and the governor, okay, so this book is also symbolic, you know, of the tabernacle of David, okay, which David pretty much was the uh, progenitor, one of the progenitors of Zerubbabel being on the scene as Zerubbabel is mentioned in Yahawashai's lineage. So there's a lot of uh, symbolism as well with these figures that are being mentioned because we know the high priest is going to be Yahawashai, okay, but the government that he's going to establish is going to be what? The government of David, who is Zerubbabel, all right? So Zerah Babal. All right, Zerah, Babal, all right, means sown in Babylon or destroyer of Babylon too, all right? But the uh, elect, you know, would be in Babylon in Latter-day Prophecy. So you have Z Z Zerah, okay, to be, bur to be burned, <laughs> okay, and... Babal, which is Babylon, confusion. Okay, so the the basically the destroyer of Babylon. All right. So it's a Rob Babal. See that? So Zerubbabel. All right, says the grandson of King Jeconiah. All right, and leader of the first group. Of returning exiles from Babylon. Now, real quick, when you go to the book of Matthew, okay, when you go to Matthew, you'll find that he is mentioned, okay? He's mentioned right here in Yahweh's lineage. Matthew 1 and 12, and after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begot Salathiel. And Salatiel begot Zerubbabel. See? And Zerubbabel begot Ab Abiud. All right? And then Eliakim came and so forth. And it goes down. And, and, and Yahawashai came through this lineage. Some good history to understand and know as you're reading these uh, prophetic books. Okay? So uh, let's go back here to the book of Haggai 1 and 1. It says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month came the word of Yahweh by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shalatiel, all right, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Yahweh Tazadak, or Josedek, okay, the high priest, okay, so you have the high priest, <laughs> okay, and you have the governor. All right, who's ultimately uh, getting ready to get rebuked. All right, because remember, after we started building under Cyrus, we stopped. Okay, and Haggai got the spirit on him to go and rebuke. And this is his words. Thus speaketh Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time has not come, the time that Yahweh's house should be built. Okay, and we can read that in the NLT. And that was the mindset of the people, okay? They had pretty much, you know, grown lazy. And the aid that they got from Cyrus, they started to just use it, you know, to take care of themselves and build their own houses, okay? Which is just how Jake is, okay? Um, NLT, this is what Yahweh, the Lord of Heaven's army says. The people are saying the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Why? Because they were being lazy. Okay, and you have that mindset amongst a lot of our people in these times. Okay, as uh, I just saw that the Apostle Ramlab went into husbandry. 
All right. The, the husbandry is a work. We're laboring. We're supposed to be laboring. If you're able body, if the spear is on you, you're supposed to be helping to build. OK. Now, if you notice, this is in the second year of Darius the king. All right. And you'll go to the book of Zechariah. OK. And it says a call into repentance. Zechariah was in the eighth month of the second year of Darius came the word of Yahweh unto Zechariah, the son of Bechariah. All right. Or Berechiah, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying, Yahweh hath been sore displeased with your fathers. OK, so there's rebuke going out to our people as the temple wasn't finished. OK. So you have Haggai and Zechariah, all right, who are contemporaries getting on our people. OK, and when you read the book of Zechariah, you'll see that, you know, um, Zerubbabel and Joshua are used as symbolisms. All right. For the future kingdom as well. All right. It says. Thus speaketh. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, and the people say the time has not come that the Lord's house should be built. OK, then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai, the prophet, saying. It is time for you. All right. Is it time for you? O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie wait. Is this the time for you to just be sitting on your ass? OK, talking shit while the, the house of the Lord lie waste. All right. Is that what times we're in? And you have a lot of that happening now. All right. Here it is. It's time to work. OK. And whatever uh, uh, lot you've been given through the Holy Spirit. Yet our people are just on the comment boards arguing back and forth with the apostles and prophets. Being disrespectful and rude. Making excuses. OK, NLT, it says, why are you living in your luxurious houses? Why my house lies in ruins? So the Heavenly Father was mad. And, and what did he do? He sent the prophet to correct our people, which the prophets have always been a thorn in our people's side. See? It says, you have sown much and bring in little, which goes back to the curses. OK, ye eat, but ye have not enough to drink. All right. But ye are filled with drink. All right. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. <laughs> and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes, meaning you, you're through. And our people are so into their cells, but they're 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 empty. OK, NLT says what? You have planted much, but harvested little. He's going into the curses. OK, you eat, but you are not satisfied. You drink, but you are still thirsty. All right. Why? Because maybe individuals feel like they're OK, but our whole nation lieth in waste. You put you on clothes, but you cannot keep warm. Always in a state of discomfort, no matter how much you think you have. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. And that's the state of our people. OK, you don't have any goddamn thing. Yet you're comfortable and putting off the, uh, the the what needs to be done to get in the right position, man. Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So the Lord is calling the prophet to tell our people to consider your ways. Look at the conditions you're in. OK. Verse eight. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith Yahweh. Right in a centerpiece of our connection with the most high was always surrounded OK, going back to Moses, you know, with the tabernacle, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, and then Solomon, you know, using the blueprint given unto him by David, had the temple built. OK, and um, at the time of uh, the Babylonians, it was destroyed. So here's the history of us, you know, starting to uh, rebuild it again. All right. After we had one campaign rebuilding it, but we stopped. All right. So he said, go to the mountain 
and get wood and build the house. Okay, now remember this temple was fully destroyed in 70 AD. Okay, so in these times, you know, our, our focus isn't as much as a um, actual physical temple, but a spiritual temple that is being built by Yahweh Shai with the souls of the elect. But we'll get into that. So go up to the mountain and bring wood, meaning work. It says in verse 9, ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith Yahweh? Because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man to his own house. Okay, so there you go. You, you look for much, and it came to little. You, you, you never win. All right, anytime our people, you know, think they got something going on, eventually... The Heavenly Father puts a halt to it. Okay, why? Because ultimately they're worried about their own houses, but the house of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai lies waste. Okay, it says, Therefore, uh, uh, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit, which that goes to the curses. Basically, he's going into the curses, which the curses were a result of disobedience. See, and he's going into you, you're pretty much in the same spirit as your forefathers. Okay, this goes to a curse, Deuteronomy 28 and 23. All right, the heaven that is over your head shall be brass <laughs> and the earth that is under you shall be iron, meaning hard times. Hell. Okay. This is one of the curses that the Lord brought upon us, man. <laughs> you see, and we, 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 we suffer these curses until this day. All right, the uh, the the people who are calling themselves Jews, they're not suffering these curses. Okay, they're they're set up in Jerusalem, and they get billions in aid annually. Okay, they get reparations for the so-called hollow uh, cost. They're not the true people of the Heavenly Father by those things alone, because the true people of the Heavenly Father will be in captivity. Before we were fully delivered in this time. Okay, but at this time, he, he's telling them, all right, you, you're catching hell because of the spirit you're in. All right, and because you have no intention on pleasing Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, it says, and I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil, upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon the men and upon the cattle. And upon all the labor of the lands. Okay. And pretty much that happened when the Babylonians came and destroyed us. So he's basically saying you're under these curses because of what? Disobedience. Okay. So after hearing Haggai's rebuke. It says then Zerubbabel the son of Shalatiel. All right. Shalatiel. And Joshua the son of Yahweh Tazadak. The high priest. With all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. All right. And the words of Haggai the prophet. As Yahweh their God had sent them. And the people did fear before Yahweh. Showing you that rebuke. The rebuke of the prophets leads to progress. You can't be easy and, and, and nice to Jake. It doesn't get the job done. And here it is in these times. The prophets constantly rebuke. And our people look at it as hate, but that's how the Heavenly Father <laughs> uses the prophets to get the job done. Okay, the prophets are going to come rough. Okay, they're going to get on people. They're going to tell them about their self. But that's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But you people get offended by that. You just want us to sit back and allow Jake to be in a lackadaisical, weak, all right, willy nilly spirit as if the Heavenly Father isn't getting ready to destroy this place. Okay, and we have a duty to do in building this uh, spiritual temple. Okay, as a matter of fact, speaking to what the scripture says, Zerubbabel and Joshua, which are the leadership, okay, the high priest and the governor, or the high priest and the king, okay, this is uh, Ezra 5 and 1. It says, Then the prophets, Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Iddo, prophesied unto the Jews that were even that were in Judah and Jerusalem 
in the name of the most high God of Israel, even unto them. All right. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son, all right, of Josedek, and began to build in the house of the most high, which is at Jerusalem, and them and with them were the prophets of God helping them. You see that? So it was through the rebuke. It was through the prophecy, okay, of our people, uh, a warning, <laughs> okay, in particular, uh, uh, Haggai and Zechariah prophesying and warning our people of their wicked ways, all right, and them not, you know, falling in the stead of their forefathers who were always destroyed because of their rebellion. This is the same spirit the prophets of this time are going to come in. As the scriptures say, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So it's the rebuke of Haggai, the rebuke of Zechariah that led to our people being galvanized, starting with the leadership to get off of their asses and rebuild. Because prior to this, you know, they were using the aid given to just work and do their own damn thing. All right. Sitting in their houses, chilling. But when it came to the, 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 the temple being rebuilt, okay, it was like, ah, you know, it's a burden because of, the, you know, the people coming up against them because of the hell that they caught. They was just like, forget it. All right. And we go through the same thing as we were building this temple. You know, the, the heathen coming up against us. You see the, uh, 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 you know, the police coming. They, they writing letters to the, you know, the uh, these governors talking about how we need to be taken off the block. We go through the same thing, but we still have to build. OK, we're literally walking in the stead of our fathers, man. OK, but for us to get out on the highways and the byways, it took rebuke. It took the prophets telling us to get off of our ass. OK, it says. Then spake Haggai, all right, Yahweh's messenger, okay, and, and this led to the people fearing the Lord. See, through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He was going into the curses. Look what the Lord has done to your ass. And you sitting up here uh, 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 and want to have a, a willy-nilly mindset towards what he's commanded us to do? Here it is. He, he, he put the spirit on uh, Artaxerxes to give you the aid. And you just go go and, 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 and just chill out? Nah, man, get up. Then spake Haggai, <laughs> the Lord's messenger, which is the voice of the Lord. The prophets are the voice of the Lord. And the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith Yahweh. Meaning, I'm going to be with you. No, don't worry about the hell you're going to catch. Okay? And the spirit, all right, and the Yahweh stirred up the spirit, <laughs> All right, of Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shelatiel, all right, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Yahweh Tazadak, or Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. See? And we can definitely tie that remnant aspect to what we got going on here today, right? Clearly, as the remnant of Israel is how we're going to be delivered. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord. Of, of of host their God and, and when you go to the book of Ezra People were helping In any way that they could Okay Ezra 2 and 68 And some of the chief of the fathers When they came to the house of the Lord Which is at Jerusalem Offered freely for the house of God To set it up in his place And they gave after their ability Alright Unto the treasure of the work Three score and one thousand grams of gold and 5,000 pounds of silver and 100 priests' garments. And I, and I wanted to bring that out because you have particular sisters and you have brothers who, who make garments, all right, for the, the priest, for the, the men of the Lord. That is a, a, that's assistance. Sending in whatever little money you can or even prayers, encouragement. All of those things are uh, aspects of helping to build the, the, the house of the Lord. Because what did the Lord say will be built in the latter days? Let's get Amos 9.
Okay? Here it is. Our people are so emotional. But look, this story, this rebuke led to great progress. And you have particular men who are in leadership positions who ain't building. So if the prophets get on, on these men, it's not for you to come and, and, and create this sob story or say, oh, that's hate. That's division. No, that, that's the voice of the Lord. Amos 9 and 11. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. OK, he will build it as in the days of old. And that's the spiritual temple that's being built here. All right. This is first Corinthians three and nine for ye are lab We are laborers together with the most high. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. OK, let's look up the word laborers. All right. We're in synergy together. Sooner ghosts. A companion and work fellow worker. All right. And what is the work we have today? We've received this gospel and we're distributing it, going out and prophesying, teaching, going into history lessons, putting our people in remembrance, teaching them the names of the most high God, Yahweh, the name of his only begotten son. The 12 tribes of Israel, that's our labor. We're working together in synergy. OK, you are God's husbandry. Husbandry. All right. Strong's G, 1091. Georgian. Georgian. A cultivated field. And we've been going into culture. All right. Cultivated. To cultivate is what? Let's look up cultivate. Husbandry, tillage. And what do you do in husbandry? You, you, you work the ground. You plant seeds. All right. That's why the word husband means to plant because what does the husband do he plants seed in his wife we're husbands in the sense of we're planting seeds in the ground all right and what springs forth is what the fruit and we want our fruit to remain okay and that's all what tied to us building and tilling and laboring together for the tabernacle of david to be rebuilt in these latter days OK, and you're not building by sitting your ass. All right. Down. All right. And, and, and just finding ways to come up against the apostles and elders and the brothers and the prophets who are going out and laboring and doing the work. OK. The word cultivate means to prepare and use. OK. For crops or gardening. OK, and the scriptures talks about how we are supposed to bring forth fruit. OK, to plow, to to plow, to dig, to till, to farm, to work, to fertilize. OK. Let's get that scripture real quick. I believe that's his. Uh. The book of uh, John 15. Yep, John 15 and 16. Ye have not chosen me. As a matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll go to it here. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. How do you bring forth fruit? Okay, through labor, through husbandry. Okay, through tilling. All right. Uh, before we came on the scene. All right. After the year 2000, our apostles and elders. OK, they left the school and they went out and taught seven years straight, catching hell, laboring, fighting. No fruit was coming in. But through that labor. OK, once they put the videos on YouTube, the Heavenly Father rewarded them with fruit. All right. But you want your fruit to remain. All right. Now, amongst the, 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 the process, some fruit it goes bad. All right. That's a part of it. But for the for the for the uh, harvest, you want good fruit. All right. To remain. OK. You want your fruit to remain. OK. 
real quick. Let's see if we can get some precepts. It's one I'm looking for in the back of my mind. It may be in that first Corinthians, uh, the third chapter. Colossians 1 and 6, which is come unto you as in all the world and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you and the fruit of your works, who you are. Okay, since the day he heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. All right, and we are under grace. Yep, 1 Corinthians uh, 3. All right, this is the one I was thinking of right here. And 6, I have planted. Apollos water it, but God gave the increase. That's your fruit. All right. Planting and watering are all uh, 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 a part of husbandry. Okay. <laughs> so then it is neither he that planteth anything, neither he that water it, but God that giveth the increase. So we're just merely vessels he used. All right. To raise up Israel, man. Okay. So we are laborers. So this is what Haggai is calling. Okay. Our people to do labor. OK, so let's read this again. Haggai 1 and 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shaltiel, the governor of uh, Yehawada or Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek or Yehawatazadak, the high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of Yehawah, the Lord of hosts, their God. In the fourth and twentieth day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius King. So 24 days later. OK, 24 days later, Jake through rebuke and he was going out constantly, I bet. OK, they heard him cursing their asses out and they was like, we got to get up. OK, remember, it said that the, 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 the Lord stirred up the spirit. Let's look up this word stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and Joshua. All right. I war. Okay, to rouse oneself, awaken, to incite, okay, to be triumphant. And it was through rebuke that that happened, man, that they were aroused to do what the Heavenly Father commanded. Okay, so let's go to the second chapter, as this is only two chapters. It says, the builders encouraged in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of Yahweh. By the prophet Haggai saying, speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shalatiel, all right, the governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek. And he keeps mentioning these names because this is symbolic, all right, and this is the tabernacle of David that's going to be established by Yahweh Shai. Now, Yahweh Shai isn't, all right, Josedek, but we know Yahweh Tazadak, Josedek here is the high priest. And who's our high priest? In these times, Yahweh Shai, the high priest in the heavens. Okay, who's the, the 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 rock on whom he established his church? All right, David, Peter. And we're going to prove that Zerubbabel is David as you read this chapter. Okay, the governor will prove it to you. It says, say this unto these men. All right, which this is symbolic of speaking to the leadership. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Speaking of the temple that was built by Solomon and how glorious it was. And now the temple after it's being sacked, you know, it's a, a bit older. OK. And, you know, it. it, 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 it you know, they started to rebuild it, but it wasn't ever brought back to that original glory that it was or had amongst the time of Solomon. OK. It says, yet now be strong and we can take this in comparison to, you know, our, our people are in a very, very low state compared to how we were, you know, before the fall of Adam. OK, we've gotten weaker and weaker and worse and worse. OK, it says, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, 
saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord. And work, all right, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Work, all right, and that's what we should be doing now, working. And everybody has a lot within the rebuilding process. It says, according to the word that I have covenant with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among ye, fear not. Okay, and who was the leader at that time? Moses. Okay, and now it's the, the, the governor, all right, the one who's at the forefront of having this tabernacle rebuilt is Zerubbabel. Okay. Let's read it again. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, all right, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Okay, and what was built at the time, at that time was a tabernacle. Okay, and it all required obedience. Okay, it says, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once is it a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. All right. And that's speaking of what's to come in the form of this destruction. As the scriptures say, the, before the Lord sets up the kingdom, it's going to be a great earthquake via nuclear missiles hitting in the presence of the chariots. OK, the earth is going to reel to and fro. OK, and just like we came out of Egypt, we're going to come out of this spiritual Egypt. OK. And that's when the real temple of the Lord will be built. New Jerusalem. The elect. Okay, it says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And we have various scriptures that can go into that. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory. What house? The house of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. And that's what the temple represented. The temple represented a place where the presence of the most high through his only begotten son dwelt. OK. And again, in these times, we don't have. OK, a, a, a spiritual, I mean, a physical temple. All right. Again, we have a, 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 a spiritual temple. We don't have a physical one. All right. You know, we're, we're not going to need a physical temple in the kingdom, all right, nor the Ark of the Covenant to have relation and connection with our power as we will be the temple and we will be at one with him through his son who's going to establish the tabernacle of David. This is First Peter 2 and 3. If so be ye have tasted all right, that the Lord is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of the most high and precious okay he's a he's the living stone of this church the chief cornerstone as the scripture say it says ye also as lively stones see we're lively stones okay <laughs> are built up on a spiritual house and holy priesthood Okay, after what? The, the the order of Melchizedek and at not after the order of Aaron. Okay, because under the order of Melchizedek, all twelve tribes can offer up a sacrifice. All twelve tribes can be considered priests. It is not just subject to uh Loya or the Levites. Okay, and our people are gonna be joined unto the most high via the, the uh Yahweh Shai, the high priest. In the 144,000 with the 12 is going to be at the head of that. Okay, that's the spiritual priesthood. <laughs> New Jerusalem that's going to be established. That's the government. Ye also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house. Okay, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by the uh, to the most high God. Yahweh by Yahweh Shai. See. So. We are able to offer up acceptable sacrifices in the form of repenting, teaching, <laughs> all right, and doing what's necessary to get the hell up out of here. And it's acceptable, all right, contrary to the first covenant and its, all right, uh, uh, qualifications. See, 
Wherefore, it is also contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, all right, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him, all right, shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, okay, the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word, being disobedient, wherein to also they were appointed. They were appointed to be disobedient. Okay? And they're going to be brought back into the vote, okay, uh, 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 once the elect are established. Okay? Now, let's go back here. The Lord's talking about how he's going to, you know, shake the nations. Okay, how it's going to be a great earthquake because because when, when we're beamed up, it talks about in Revelation the eleven chapter how it's going to be a great earthquake, America, Babylon, and great being destroyed. The whole world is going to shake at that. <laughs> okay, it says, "The silver is mine and the gold is mine," saith Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. All right, and the latter house. It's not speaking of the finishing of that uh, rebuilding of that temple, okay, at that time, okay, because eventually we did, you know, finish it, but it was never back to the old glory. And then who came and, and, and defiled it again? The Greeks, okay, we fought, had, you know, victories and skirmishes, you know, we fought for some form of, you know, uh, government, you know, under the Romans. All right, but ultimately we've never had, all right, a, a, a sovereign kingdom since David and Solomon. Okay, and it's promised in the latter days that the Lord would have a spiritual temple built. Okay, which is ultimately going to be New Jerusalem, and when you get Zechariah real quick, as a matter of fact, let's keep going. Haggai 2 and 9, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former. Okay, and that's when, when you get Revelation 21. Let's get that real quick. Okay, because Moses had a tabernacle. All right, and we know the tabernacle of David is going to be rebuilt. Okay, this is Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So the, 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 the heavenly father is going to dwell, all right, in men. Okay, in particular, all right, it starts with Yahweh Shai through the tabernacle of David. Okay, and, and we're going to be his people. Okay, New Jerusalem, and it's described, all right, as, um, you know, it's the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles of the Lamb, okay, and 144 cubits. See, that's the, 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 the building, okay, and it's going to be more glorious than anything any physical temple could do because... The Lord said he dwelleth not. In temples made with hands. OK, so here it is. You have groups saying, well, in the kingdom, that's when we're going to build the third temple. And ultimately, the Levites are going to offer sacrifice and all of this. That's garbage, man. Is the Ark of the Covenant going to be there? Because clearly Jeremiah tells you we will never have to look for the Ark of Covenant again. Revelation 21 said there shall be no temple. Now, I'm sure we'll have buildings. I'm pretty sure we will do ceremonial sacrifices. All right. For our feast days and holy days and things like that. But sacrifices for sins for any Israelite will never be needed again. OK, no Israelite will have to go to uh, uh, the high priest. After the, the you know, the uh, lineage of Aaron, which that required you to be born physically into a levite family 
carnally, like meaning see the seed had to, you know, that was the only way you could be a priest. All right. Under that first covenant. That's why it's called the carnal commandment, because it was based upon you being born as a uh, Levite. OK, or after the sons of Aaron for the high priest. So it was based upon something carnal. See, all 12 tribes are going to go back to their original birth. All right. Which is in the heaven, starting with the leadership, the first fruits. OK, who are all born directly from the most high God through Yahweh Shai. All right. That's the true temple. All right. This is Acts. Seven and forty eight. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as said the prophet. OK, <laughs> so again, that's not where the heavenly father fully intended to dwell. Those were only all right. Uh, uh, those temples, the, the tabernacle and then the temple. All right. They were only symbolic of something greater to come as he would dwell in us. We are the temple. The kingdom of the most high is within you, starting with this knowledge, wisdom and understanding. OK, Acts 17 and 24. And God made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. OK, so those things are only temporary. So let's go back to Haggai. Chapter two. And we'll start at nine again. OK, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, all right? Saith Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, and in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts, and that's going to come through Shiloh, okay? The high priest, all right, who comes from the loins and lineage of David, which is Yahweh Shai, okay? And everything that the, you know, temple that Solomon built stood for, Everything that the tabernacle that Moses stood for will be fulfilled in the elect. All right. You know, you had the uh, mercy seat, <laughs> um, which ultimately that's symbolic of Yahweh Shai. OK, you had the uh, Urim and the Thummim. All right. Which was possessed by the high priest, which gave us guidance. OK, we'll, we'll have that in fullness. All right. We'll all be guided by the most high God, Yahweh, because he's going to dwell with us. Okay, he's going to dwell in us through his Holy Spirit, through his only begotten son. Okay, so everything, all right, the tabernacle and the temple stood for is going to be fulfilled in the elect under Yahweh Shai. Okay, and we look forward to that peace. Okay, and it's going to be under uh, a new priesthood, which is the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, which all 12 tribes will have access. OK, it says in the fourth and 20th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius came the word all right, of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet. Thus said the Lord of hosts, ask now the priest concerning the law. OK. Saying, if one bear holy flesh, all right, in the skirt of his garment and with his skirt do touch, uh, do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered, no. All right. Now, let's read this in the NLT because this goes to the things uh, that were set apart in the temple. All right. And were consecrated for uh, religious purposes for sat for sacrificial purposes and for other purposes um let's go here real quick this is uh the nlt it says if one of you is carrying some meat all right which meat was a big part of uh sacrificial uh duties all right and you had particular meats particular bread particular oils and other things that were set apart all right, for sacrificial practices. Okay, he's speaking to the priest here. It says, if one of you is carrying some meat from a holy sacrifice in his robes, and his robe happens to brush up against some bread or stew, wine or olive oil, or any other kind of food, will it also become holy? All right, the priest replied, no. Okay, 
And ultimately you had other meats and things in the temple that weren't all right for sacrificial purposes. Okay. So he's saying if the gut if the if the, if the particular holy garment the priest would have on touch those things that weren't, you know, set aside for sacrificial purposes, the, do they become holy and made holy for sacrificial purposes? All right, and the priest replied, No. Okay, which was the right answer. All right, and I believe Leviticus 6 goes into that. It says, Then Haggai said, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of those, shall it become unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. All right, if you had just touched a, a, a dead body, you couldn't go into the temple, all right, and deal with with the meats, the breads, and everything that were uh, in the holy place. Okay, you couldn't have sex with a woman and go into the temple and deal with the showbread and all of those various different things. Which the showbread and all of these things were changed out every Sabbath. Okay? So they answered right, it shall be unclean. Alright, and I believe that's Numbers, the 19th chapter. Yeah, numbers nine. Yep, numbers nineteen goes into that. Okay, he would have to uh, uh, sanctify himself, and then, all right, he can be considered clean. All right, it says, verse fourteen. Then ha answered Haggai and said, "So is this people, and so is this nation before me," saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands. And that which they offer unto me is unclean. Okay, so the particular sacrifices they were doing, okay, and how they were carrying themselves and their mindset towards the temple, it was all unclean in the eyes of the Lord. Though they were offering up sacrifices, they were, you know, um, acting as if, you know, they were still down. Okay, but their minds were far from the Lord. Okay. It says, and now I pray you consider from this day upward from restore before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. OK, and, I, and that goes back around 15 years at the time of Cyrus, where they started the building of the temple. It says, since those days were all right, when one came to an heap of 20 measures, then there were but 10 when one came to the uh press fat for to draw out 50 vessels out of the press but there were only 20 I meaning everything you were doing i mean you you couldn't see that the heavenly father wasn't dealing with you okay let's read this in the nlt okay things weren't working for jake and look at us now okay it says when you hoped for a 20 bushel crop all right you harvested only 10 when you expected to draw 50 gallons from the wine press, you only found 20, right? meaning you weren't as plenteous all right, as you once were. All right? And that's because the Lord ain't filling you or your ways. It says, I smote you with blasting and with mildew and with hail and all the labors of your hands. Yet ye turn not to me, saith the Lord. And this can be likened unto now as well. You know, as our people are catching all of this hell, yet they haven't turned to the lord in sincerity and truth and if they do turn to him they do it by their own means all right and not through the obedience that he requires okay as he said obedience is better than sacrifice okay and it's time for us in these times to turn unto the lord okay because the, the we're we're living the end result of a curse for disobedience and the water yahweh bashim yashai for the remnant all right, it says, uh, Haggai 2 and 18, it says, Consider now this from this day upward, from the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month. All right, when they, when they got galvanized to get up and build, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Consider it, all right, going back 15 years ago, you know, when they uh, started at the time of uh, Cyrus, you know, Nehemiah. Ezra, so forth. It says, Is the seed yet in the barn? 
Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not brought forth from this day. I will bless you. Let's read that in the NLT. Okay. It says, I am giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn. Yet you have not yet harvested your grain and your grapevines and your fig trees and your pomegranates and your olive trees have you have not yet produced their crops. But from this day onward, I will bless you. OK, why? Because of obedience and that obedience that, you know, they had back then is for the generations to come. When the true tabernacle will be built. Okay. And we enter into the land of milk and honey. Okay. This is uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. A land of brooks of water and fountains and depths that spring out valleys and hills. A land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein you shall eat. Without scarceness, and thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. It's just laden with uh, all manner of resources and good things, okay? And ultimately, that's the land we're going to return to through obedience in this time, okay? And we're, we're, we're not going to lack anything, okay? Going back here to the book of Haggai. All right, uh, 2 and 20, it says, And again, the word of Yahweh came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, okay, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, all right, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, <laughs> Okay, and will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. Now, this is speaking of World War Three, and the destruction that's going to come to Babylon the Great. All right, when these heathen, okay, are going to try and fight against the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay, and we know at that time, these devils are going to come after the true church and the scriptures say the gates of hell shall not prevail okay against the true church okay as a matter of fact let's get that um let's get the book of zechariah the fourth chapter real quick of what um zechariah said to zerubbabel all right Let's get it in the NLT. Zechariah 4 and 7. Lord, it says, Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, will stand in Zerubbabel's way, and it will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple in place, the people will shout, May God bless it. May God bless it. All right. And that's ultimately the spiritual temple that's going to be built but as you see it says not even a mighty mountain okay is going to stand in zerubbabel's way all right now let's get this what was told unto peter okay who is david who is zerubbabel all right um matthew who is moses all right these are the builders of the tabernacle okay matthew 16 and 18 and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, same thing that's being said, all right, of Zerubbabel, okay, who, you know, through him, okay, um, let's, let's, let's keep reading, okay, Zechariah 4 and 8, moreover the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the fount foundation of this house and his hand shall also finish it and thou shalt know that Yahweh the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you all right and he is going to finish it all right as the tabernacle of David is being finished here in these times all right now I'm um, going back to uh the book of uh Haggai all right 
Let's read it again. Haggai 2 and 21. Speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah. All right. As the scriptures say, the government is going to be on Yahawashai's shoulder. Okay. Who Yahawashai is the high priest. The, 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 the ephod was put on the high priest's shoulders with all the 12 tribes of Israel representing, you know, our government. Well, the government is going to be on Yahweh Shai, the high priest's shoulder, and he's going to establish the throne of David. Okay. Saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of the kingdoms, and will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. Okay. <laughs> and that's you Edomites. All right. The scriptures speak of the red horse. And he that rode on him, all right? And it also likens Pharaoh and his army as those on the horses riding uh, uh, the chariots. You see? So this is symbolic of the victory that's coming when Yahweh Shai comes and takes down these heathen. He's going to overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down every one by the sword of his brother because it's going to be all out war. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shalatiel, saith the Lord, and I will make thee as a signet, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. And the signet is what? OK, a stamp of approval. OK. Let's get the word signet. OK, that's going to be where the government is laid, the tabernacle of David. Okay, ha wa thumb, signet seal, signet ring, a signature ring. All right, that's going to be the Lord's signature. Okay, it says, uh, ha thumb, a seal, a fix, a seal to seal. All right, to affix one seal, to fasten up by sealing. Okay, and that's the government. All right, it's as simple as that. That's the government that's going to be laid, okay, um, in which is going to be the kingdom of heaven, the throne of David. All right, but here he's saying, Zerubbabel, I'm going to make you as a signet. All right, he's chosen for that position. All right, it's his, his, his tabernacle, it's his temple. All right, but ultimately, Yahweh Shah is going to establish it. All right, now let's go to Zechariah, the, the, uh, Sixth chapter and eleven verse. All right, Zechariah six and eleven, the symbolic crowns. All right, because a lot of this is all symbolic of what's to come. All right, under Yahweh Shai, who's going to establish, okay, the throne of David. Okay, um, Zechariah six and eleven. Then take silver and gold and make crowns, and set them upon the head. Of Joshua, the son of Yahweh Tazadak, okay, the high priest, okay, <laughs> and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, all right, let's look up this word branch, the word branch. And this is speaking of Yahweh the root of Jesse. All right. Tazamach. All right. Tazamach. All right. Sprout, growth, branch. Okay. Sprout, shoot of Messiah from the Davidic tree. All right. This is Yahweh who's going to come from the loins and lineage of David. Okay. Which remembers Zerubbabel is in that line. OK, so it says and speak unto him, saying, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, behold, the man whose name is the branch. Which when you look up Nazareth, where Yahweh Shai uh, grew up, it means a uh, branch. From what I remember, it says, and he shall grow up out of his place and shall build the temple of the Lord. And how is he doing that in a spiritual sense? He's building a spiritual temple. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh. And he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne, which is the throne of David, and shall be a priest upon his throne. 
and the council of peace shall be between them both. And the crowns shall be to Helam and Tobiah and to Jedediah and to the son and, and to hand the son of Zephaniah for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Okay. And then it says this, which is a prophecy. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And we're doing that now. And ye shall know that Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. All right. Now, these were priests in the temple and crowns were put on their head. Okay. And when Yahweh Shai comes back, it tells you. Okay, he's going to have many crowns. Okay, and he's going to set crowns upon our heads. Okay, this is uh, Revelation 19 and 12. And his eyes were as the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. All right, and that's his rank. Okay, he is king of kings and lord of lords. Okay, he has a, uh, a rank above all of the angels in the heavens okay even when he came onto the earth his 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 role and rank was higher than what any man could uh, uh do he's the only one that can bring us back to the heavenly father but he's gonna have many crowns he's king of kings and lord of lords and it tells you in the book of uh, second ezra's the second chapter that he's gonna set crowns upon our heads you see, and we're going to be what? Kings and priests after the order of Malak Tazadak. Okay, so we are in these latter days building. Okay. For the purpose of what? The, the tabernacle of David to be rebuilt. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's get Isaiah 51, 8. Isaiah 58 and... Twelve. It says, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places and shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shall be called the repair of the breach, the restore of paths to dwell in. And that's happening as this spiritual temple was being built. OK, again, going back to first Corinthians three and nine. OK, for we are laborers together with the most high for ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. OK, and when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, OK, he gathered Peter and the rest of the disciples and that began, all right, the building of the spiritual temple, which will be finished in this time. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed on how he build it. OK, for other foundation can no man lay. All right. Then is that is laid, which is in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. There you go. So we are building. All right. This is a, a, a spiritual temple. Um, and, um, you know, it's just about finished. OK. And the, the, the end result, the, the result we're looking for is to be beamed up and perfected. All right. So that the Heavenly Father's presence will fully dwell in us. All right, so this concludes the book of Haggai, the first chapter and the second chapter. Um, hopefully you all were edified. All right, remember then, you know, they begin rebuilding the temple, but an even greater temple, all right, that's not made with man's hands, is going to be built and laid, all right, through Yahweh Shai, which we are partaking in that building in these times, man. Shalom.